we're back on the roof. So we got no heat call. Um, reducer's running, but it's cool. It's not getting hot. So something's going on with this thing. Uh, we gotta see what's going on. Yeah, that's it's just circulating air. So anyway, uh, let's open her up and see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, I know this is counterproductive, but I just wanna make sure I'm getting a call for heat and it's not just stuck on for some reason. Uh, so we got um, 28 volts, so it is receiving the call. The thermostat is calling, so that's a good sign. So uh, I'm guessing it's in, probably in some sort of lockout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset it. Killed the power. And restore power. It'll probably take a minute for that thermostat to call for heat again. Which, let's see, yep, no call yet. But I am kind of impatient, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump it out. So we're gonna use our jumper cable here, and we're gonna go W to R, which I think is that guy right there. Yeah, so there's W. And we go to R. It's so cold, my jumpers don't wanna open, oh man. Eh. Alrighty, gas is turned on. Let's see what happens. It does have a pressure switch, so I wonder if that's not closing. Because we're not getting an ignition attempt, at least none that I can hear. Okay, so let's see if our pressure switch is closing. When we check uh, while this is live, we should get zero volts or my meter at least close to. So yeah. So if that was open, I'd show 24 volt or 28 volts in this case. So we don't got that going. So the next thing that's in the circuit is this little rollout switch. So let's see if that thing is tripped. Nope. Okay. Okay, so we got the igniter out, and this is a flame sensor, so we're gonna get that all clean. The spacing looks okay. So yeah, we're gonna get, clean this off just in case, and then we'll hook it up. Okay, so I got that all back together, and I cleaned this so I can see inside. Um, so what I'm thinking is, um, I'm gonna check for power going to the module. So I have one on ground and one on power. So when this is energized, 24 volts is energized to that module and it should immediately start clicking. So I'm gonna make sure I'm getting power to it. Um, if I'm not, uh, then something else is going on. Uh, if I am, then the module is probably dead. So we'll go from there. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the module is receiving 24 volts, but it's not sparking. So, we want to make sure that this is grounded properly. Okay, so it seems like it's grounded, so that's good. So it looks like we just got a bad uh, uh, ignition control module. So I'm going to see if I can find one, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is a diagram of how this particular, um, how this particular uh, ignition module works. So you have your thermostat, right, and that's connected to your terminals. Uh, your connection terminal and then so you receive 24 volts through w to call for heat which hits the connection terminal then from the uh, connection terminal it's going to go into the pressure switch uh, the pressure switch will close which will allow that 24 volts to go through the rollout switch assuming that hasn't been tripped it will continue to the module uh, and of course we also have a, a common connected so that's going to uh, close our circuit which will power up this module so this module will then receive 24 volts, which it has a built-in transformer. It'll transform it into about 10,000 volts, and that will energize this spark electrode right here. Uh, the spark electrode will spark. Once that happens, it's going to go ahead and energize the gas valve through MV, so it's going to put 24 volts to the gas valve, which will open it. You will get ignition. And then the flame sensor will detect the flame and then it will go ahead and um, 
you know, cut the spark electrode. Uh, at that point, it's, it's running. So if for some reason the inducer is not functional or there's some kind of plug, the pressure switch won't close, so this will never energize. So in our situation, we, this was energizing. Uh, we were receiving the 24 volts to the module, so that tells us that none of these pressure switches or rollout switches, that all the safeties were fine. So that means nothing was tripped. Uh, so that tells us that there's an issue with the module itself. More than likely, it's the built-in transformer had failed, so it wasn't energizing the electrode, uh, which would not allow it to open the gas valve because it wasn't detecting any flame. So this is just like a, a simple little schematic that I drew up for you guys, so hopefully this helps. And again, this is on a, uh, a Lennox uh, 1990s package unit, so uh, different units are going to work differently, but this is how this one works. Okay, so it's been two days. We got our part right here. We're gonna go ahead and replace our uh, direct spark ignition controller and uh, hopefully it works. So, uh, okay, so MVs, that's main valve right there. Uh, FS, that's for flame sense. And these are our commons. Um, yeah, so that's a common and this is their ground. So I'm gonna have to actually run a wire to the case to ground it because this one's all plastic on the back. So, yeah. So we'll do that. Hopefully I have that some green wire. I like to keep things color co coded when I can. So I did find a green wire for a ground and then I'll replace the spade connector with one of these so I can put it under a screw. Okay, so we got the moment of truth. Uh, we got it all mounted in there and we just grounded it to that screw there. Don't worry, I'll zip tie that once I verify it works. We got our uh, R to G, or I'm sorry, R to W jumped out. Please work, fingers crossed, here we go. Only gas valve open. Your light. Oh yeah, there she goes. Oh yeah, we got ignition. I got a little scared there because it was like super quiet. <laughs> Even the wind died down. It was like, oh no, it's not working. But yeah, so it lit up. So we were right. It was the igniter, uh, or the ignition module was no good. So it sounds like we got heat again. So we're gonna let it run for a little while, just make sure everything's good and to go. And then uh, we'll zip tie some of these wires up and just kind of clean it up a bit. But we got heat. So anyway, that's how you diagnose a spark ignition device um, or control module. So for the most part, sometimes stuff can get on the igniter itself and block it so it can't spark. Um, so sometimes cleaning it can fix it. Uh, another thing it could be is the um, it could be some sort of safety that's not preventing that's preventing this one uh, from powering up. And uh, the last thing is, it could just be the module itself has failed, which in this case, it looks like it failed. So, yeah. And uh, it's very important that these things are grounded properly. So, but yeah, this guy is totally grounded. I mean, the whole back end, you see this is actually attached to it. So, um, but yeah, so that's how, that's how you, uh, you fix a uh, issue with a spark igniter. And that's also how you test for it. So uh, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Whoosh.